okay there we go hello everyone uh, good to see you guys here for attending my sessions of linux essentials and networking stuffs so it is good to start with a brief introduction about me what i am where i'm from what actually i do so i'm gautam verma a junior software developer from indore india and currently i am appointed as a mentor at google summer of code under liquid galaxy organizations and uh, apart from this i am doing a developing stuff at eth india fellowships and as for my past experience if we take a look into that i am a two time con two times contributor at google summer of code again on that like under with the liquid galaxy organizations and uh, and in parallel i also did an internship under the summer of bitcoin uh, under the like uh, eclair organizations and at there i have built somewhat around the monitoring tools for ethereum node that uh, this does uh, the stuff related to a monitoring and visualize the time series metrics in, uh, with the help of grafana and prometheus apart from this developing stuffs i have a bit experience of writing a technical content um, like under the geeks for geeks organization or company i have uh, like written a certain amount of uh, articles uh, related to uh, tech terms networking uh, programming languages and stuff around around this so at 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 like at last i have a pretty good experience of working in tech industries around 2 to 3 years of exp like experience and um, and yeah let's see what we are going to discuss in the sessions and uh, how how we will gain the knowledge about the networking essentials in in the linux so let's get starts master in linux essentials so like uh, networking is a stuff which is we want to have in our system when we need to communicate with another network or uh, another device networking is essentials if we wants to perform a wireless connections over 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 like sharing of data and stuff related to that not just a but but the thing is networking is not limited to wireless connections we also need a networking stuff while we perform the networking via cables via modems via hub like networking is essential if we wants to connect with the what right if we wants to connect with any another computer we need networking if you if like if you want to send our data to our to our another systems we need networking so networking is essentials for for like in this world and um, in this session we will see how we can perform the networking in linux and what are the basic concepts of our networking and uh, and like we will also see some critical services that is that's comes under the networking and uh, and after this we will see how it's like how we can manage networking stuff in linux and at the end we will see some general problems that generally occurs when we perform a networking stuff in in linux so let's start so like before getting deep dive into uh, managing of networking it is it is good if we have a brief introduction about like uh, what networking is or like 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 what is ip address what is subnetting what is dns what is dhcp this is somewhat a, a service related to our networking so if we will first uh, take a look into uh, the services and then we, like we will move further on first we will clear up with the fundamentals and then we will take a look deep right into our next next so um, another services so the first term that can you know be put into our presentation and that is an internet protocol or an ip address so ip address is nothing but a unique numerical identifier that is assigned to an every device uh, connected to a network and that uses the internet protocol for communication right and uh, the thing is ip address enables device to communicate with each other and to access the resources on like over the internet and uh, an ip address consists of uh, like series of numbers which are usually represented in dot decimal notation for uh, ip like internet protocol version 4 and uh, and like for a hexadecimal notation for ipv6 as you can see there in this we have uh, the hexadecimal notation for ipv6 and like which is the four six versions of internet protocols and in ipv4 we have the addresses which is which is separated by the dot or can you say the periods uh, if we talk about the ipv4 like version 4 addresses and this is these are basically a 32 bit uh, number and are typically represented as a four decimal number separated by dots as we can see that in this example and uh, for the ip address uh, ipv ipv6 
addresses there is a like 122 bit numbers are are like usually represented in hexadecimal notations and we can see the examples here we have a like two example that completely completely represent ipv4 and ipv6 and so that's all about um, the ip address we are mainly, like like mainly use these two types of ip addresses that is ipv4 and ipv6 we have discussed this form like we have discussed the format of ipv4 and ipv6 so in ipv4 we are limited to uh, like around 3.5 billion addresses but in ipv6 we have a huge huge like huge range or limit of ip addresses so we came up with the solution of ipv6 and uh, at the end i will say that uh, ip address is nothing but an internet protocol that help our device or node to to identify their identity uniquely over the internet or or a network for the basic communications between them so this is all about ip addressing let's get uh, uh, let's get to know more about the subnetting so here the subnetting is a process of dividing a large network into a smaller subnetwork or we can say that subnets this is typically done uh, to to like improve the networking efficiency and uh, and like allowing the security by better control over the network traffic and uh, like it is also used to minimizing the impact of network failures or attacks because uh, because the main main big networks are divided into a sub network in the example you can see that we have the home network that has an ip address which is range of 192.168.0.1 192.168.0.254 right with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 this means that the first three octet of ip address that is 192.168.0 represent the network portions while the last octet is represent the host portion that is 12254 and uh, and the thing is uh, subnetting allows us to like further divide the network into a smaller subnets by just changing the subnet mask and uh, we, like we, in this example we can see that we divide our home network into a four subnet mask by dividing the range of host portion as you can see that here in the example we clearly divided from 1 to 62 and 65 to 126 63 host 63 and 62 host so that like this is all about a subnetting subnetting is one of the major like uh, fundamentals of networking because we usually uh, needs to divide like divide our big network into a sub parts while handling with uh, the big network and it also minimize the uh, issue of getting uh, attacked by any any, any any like security breaches so it is good to know the what is actually subnetting is so let's move ahead with some network interfaces so uh, network interfaces is a hardware or a software component that uh, that that enables a computer or user or another device to connect uh, to a network um it it as as the name suggested that it provides the interface between the computer operating systems and physical network connection and uh, a network interface can be a physical component uh, like uh, um, network interface card or like any wireless adapters and it can be a virtual component also such as a software defined network interfaces that we usually uh, see in the docker type things and uh, if we talk about the physical network interfaces uh, are basically insta installed inside of a, of a computer and or or a device and connected a network wire ethernet cable so this is a physical uh, can be said the physical network interfaces while on the other hand if we see the types of network interfaces that connect wirelessly we can say that virtual network interfaces are or or like created by a software and uh, are used to connect virtual machines to a network this in like the thing is this in, like interfaces are created and managed by the hypervisor and uh, which is the software layer that enables multiple virtual machines to run a single physical machines if you like you know about uh, the hypervisor if, if if you know a bit about how virtual machines actually works and how 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 they perform the communication between each of them so hypervisor is set between the between but like act as an uh, as, as an communication manager and uh, yeah the, this is all about network inter interfaces uh, like nowadays we have literally 
wide varieties of network interfaces and we can't even take a look all all of them so here you can see some pictures of uh, basic network interfaces like ethernet wi-fi bluetooth and docker and the docker we like the docker is like most of us usually use the docker for for managing or like deploying the, our applications so we, we like we know about how how networking interfaces are actually provided in in docker and that's for wi-fi and bluetooth we are using it from from our channels so we know that how how wi-fi provides our our facility to to like interact with other networks and uh, yeah this is all about the network interfaces so the thing is now uh, i want to see the available network x net network interfaces in linux so how we can see that so for like for for like sh seeing the available networking interfaces in linux we have a wide varieties of tools available in the market or or like also it, it it, it came in to be installed by default but one of them is called like nmcli nmcli stands is a is like is like a, a command line utility or stands for the network management command line tool it 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 helps us to manage the network interfaces in an efficient manner like in this snapshot we can see that we are using the command nmcli device status that have a various columns like device uh, which types of uh, network interfaces it is it is connected disconnected or unmanaged states we also have connections at the end and it it likes we have the computer uh, like couples or like uh, relations between between like in, the, in like in the table and we can easily see the details about <coughs> the network interfaces in the like with the help of this command all you need is to run and on cli device status you will get information about as you can see that I am using the ENP0S3, which is a type of Ethernet and it is a connect. It is a like wireless, like wired connections. So somebody like you will like you will get the information about this and uh, yeah, that's all about the network interfaces. Now like we have the brief introduction about network fundamentals, like what is subnetting, what is IP address, what is network interfaces. So yeah, like the thing is we are bit familiar about what the basic fundamentals of networking so now let's take a look into a critical services that is provided uh, like we usually use in the networking and and we usually use in in, in linux also okay so dhcp dhcp is nothing but a dynamic host configuration protocol and it stands for the as i said that it's it stands for the dynamic host protocol like like a dynamic host config configuration protocol um it is a network protocol that is used to automatically assign ip addresses and other network is uh, other network settings settings to the device on a network uh, the thing is when a device is connected to a network that uses the dhcp it sends a request for an ip address and other network settings 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 like simple like this is the simple thing whenever we our device is connected to a network that that uses the dhcp protocol it sends out an a request for an, assigning the ip address and the network settings then a dhcp server network then responds to this request by assigning an available ip address and the other network settings to a device this this works simple as it is added as it seems our our device make a request for 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 uh, uh, assigning a IP address settings and IP address to a DHCP server, and DHCP server will respond to this request by assigning a uh, available IP available IP address from the shared pool and other network settings to the devices. Um, the DHCP server uh, use, like uses the pool of available IP address and another settings and which can like which it can assign to devices as they connected to it to the network as as I said this. This enables a device to automatically uh, configure with uh, the like a correct network settings without the need of any manu manual configurations. So like the user not need to perform any manual configuration. They just need to connect a device. The device will make a request to DHCP server and DHCP server will respond to a device with the assigned uh, IP address and like and that IP address should be available and uh, with the other network settings. 
like some marks, sub, like some like masks and uh, like other information related to this. Okay, so now the thing is, what if I want to see the live working of DHCP in Linux? We have an various tools for for seeing the live working of DHCP in Linux, but majorly we have like we like we usually use the two tools that is one is Wireshark and another is TCP dub. Wireshark is an like open source software that enables a user to capture the packets over the internet. This this tools can easily help you to modify like like to capture the DHCP protocol. Like DHCP protocol uh, DHCP protocol uh, DHCP protocol packets and we can easily make some filter over it and then easily see the packets on, on the dashboard of Wireshark and another another method of uh, like seeing the DHCP protocol is uh, to use the TCP dump command TCP dump command is uh, also a command line utility that uh, widely used for capturing the packets that is moving over the networks all you need to just uh, like identify like uh, all you need to just type the interfaces that as you can see that in this uh, command we are running this command as a sudo privilege as sudo tcp dump then still hyphen i hyphen i stands for the interface that is eth0 and the port number here i'm using a port number 67 and 68 because dhcp uses this protocol uh, like this ports for for like communications and for sending the packets and this and like this dhcp uses this 67 and 68 port number for for the packet conversion like for packet communications so this is all about DHCP. Now let's see how DHCP actually work. Like how they assign request, how DHCP server responds to that request, and then finally assign uh, the IP data settings to it. So yeah, like in this in this picture, you can see that in the left side we have the Linux clients, and in the right side we have the DHCP server. And uh, the firstly, when like whenever the, our client is connected to the network, they 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 like they, they broadcast the DHCP discover message and they, the, the DHCP finally receive it and then DHCP server sends the DHCP offer broadcast message again to DHCP client and, and again DHCP request that like uh, again our next client can make a DHCP request to a DHCP server and then finally DHCP server uh, assigned the IP address along with some network settings and at the end we have the acknowledged, acknowledged message from the DHCP server. So yeah, that's this is all about the communications between DHCP uh, clients, uh, sorry, DHCP server and any next client. So yeah. Another critical service, DNS. Most of us we already know about DNS because it is the most popular, uh, popular like services that we used and in our daily life. While we use uh, email, while we use web browser, while we visit sites and everything. So let's understand what is DNS is. So DNS stands for the domain name system. It is a system that translates the human domains like. Uh, www.example.com or like www.world.com into the IP address that machines can understand. That is we discuss that IP address that we discussed in our previous slide. That is uh, somewhat looks like 192.168.29.146.i uh, colon So this is what uh, the machine understands. Machine doesn't understand what is the domain. Machine doesn't understand what is www.example.com. The uh, only thing machine under understand is the IP address, uh, and that may be an IPv4 and IPv6. It doesn't matter. And the D, like the D, like the thing is the DNS system is a distributed database that is managed by a global network of a DNS server. And like whenever the user enters a domain name into a web browser or uh, another application, the DNS system search for corresponding IP address and the return its address to the user device and uh, the process of resolving a domain names to an IP address involves several steps as like first the user sends user device sends a DNS query to a local DNS server and if DNS server has a requested information in its cache in its cache 
then it will definitely uh, return the IP address to the user device. If, if, if the information is available in the cache, they will respond to the user request immediately. But the thing is, what if the uh, information is not available in the cache? If in, like the thing is, if, if, if information is not available in the local DNS server cache, it forwards it forward the request to an upstream DNS server. Now the process continue until the information is found and returned to the user device. And uh, the DNS is used in a wide range of application, including email, web browsing, online gaming, local server for file transfer. Without DNS, user would need to remember the IP address of all websites. And it is literally next to impossible for us for understanding or like for remembering the IP address of uh, all the machines. And it will literally create problem for us. So DNS is the most widely ser uh, a service we usually use in regular activities in email, in web browser. And, uh, and, and let's see how the working of DNS with the help of these examples. As you can see that in this in this browser, suppose I'm, I want to visit www.example.com and wants to get my uh, information about the file. I will first make a request to a DNS server and suppose that the DNS server have the corresponding IP address for www.example.com in its cache. It will immediately return the IP address for it. As you can see that here we have 12.45.56.67. That is the IP address over which the example.com server is runs. So when we visit this IP address, the web server responds us with the help with this data or our information. So this is all about the DNS working. I hope uh, we, like you are like you guys are getting a uh, uh, pretty good information about DNS working, DHCP working, uh, network interfaces, and uh, somewhat that stuff related to our networking stuff. Later on, we will see the how to manage the network settings. I think that we have uh, the brief introduction about networking, what networking is, what like what we usually do in networking. This is just a, a smaller or like a small parts of networking. Although networking is literally big, the more we get into it, the more we will discover it. Yeah, this, this is all about the networking. Networking is so big. We can't cover all this, all the networking stuff in the one sessions. We need a lot of station for covering covering the all networking stops. So let's see how to manage the networking settings. Yeah. So in this in this like like from like from this slides from this current slide we will we will see the Linux commands only for managing the networking stops and uh, we will see some command line tools uh, that we usually need to use while managing the networking services in Linux and uh, yeah let's start. So if config this is the most uh, used uh, command I have ever used while while searching for the IP address of my systems or any uh, or any network interfaces that is, that is connected to my systems. So as you can see that if config hyphen a this is the command for the symbols and return a simply all interfaces that is currently available over our systems and it returns information about whether it is down or up. Uh, all we need to just use a hyphen a flag like this like this flag and with the help of uh, IP config we can perform several tasks also like to activating or deactivating the network interfaces and we can also assign IP address like a particular IP address to interfaces by running this command as, as in the second command you can see that I am assigning uh, this 195.167.54.6 IP address to ETL0 to ETL0 interface with the subnet with the, like with the net mask of 255.255.255.0. So with the help of this command, I will I, like I will be able to assign this IP address to the particular network interfaces. And for the rest of two commands, and one is for the activations and one is for the uh, uh, deactivation or like shutting down our network interfaces. Uh, we can like all we need to do is like sudo I have found pick up their interface name. It may be EDS zero. It may be somewhat Docker and, and any other network interfaces that's not a matter and uh, for deactivating we just need to do a vice versa we did in up we like we did a sudo if config down etl0 so yeah this uh, like here in the screen we have examples how if config command looks or like render the information about the network interfaces 
as you can see that we have here like information like this is up we have uh, uh, the broadcast that is running multicasting with the like inet number this is ipv4 now ip address and this is ipv version 6 ip address this is the broadcast ip address and uh, this is the name of network interfaces so this is this is the information that is actually written by the IF config command and uh, with the help of this we can we can identify the uh, types of network interfaces that is connected to our Linux systems yeah so yeah here we have the another tool that is uh, eth tool it is also an also an, another command line utility which which which, which is used to uh, like manage uh, the internet uh, like network interfaces over the internet or uh, because we, we have here we can see that there are three uh, ways, like different ways of using this command first commands are like eth2 interfaces which like which, which like lists out all the uh, informations about the interfaces like what is the uh, interface name what is the status is it, like is, is it up or down the speed of internet connections uh, the duplex mode if it's half half duplex full duplex and other supportive features so this like rest of two commands you can see that one is for the speed and another is for a duplex with the help of this we can we can like we can set the duplex mode uh, whether we want to work full duplex, half duplex, or anything else. Like with the help of this tool, we can also set the speed for a network interface. So I guess this is a pretty like pretty good tools we can use for for like setting up the general st stuffs around the networking. So let's see the example. Okay, in this example, you can see that I'm getting the information about. Uh, interfaces that will stand for the ENP 0 s3 so and as you can see that we this is uh, like auto negation is yes is, is like this is the, the speed is 1000 mbps but not actually a thousand mbps because actually this is too much like as this are connected a wire this is showing just because of this because this is a wire network but if i take a look over the wire then it will be decreased or like a down because it is Next to impossible, as you can see that the port is two step pair cable, and uh, and yeah, this, this like we will get this this much amount of information about uh, uh, about the network interfaces, and it, like in this we can also see that the uh, duplex mode is full. Okay, so here we have uh, the another command line tool that is root. So root is a Linux command line utility that allows us to view and modify the network routing, routing table. So routing table is nothing but a table which is used uh, by the operating system to determine the path that network packets take to reach the destinations. Suppose uh, there is a sender A and there is a sender receiver, a receiver B. So if sender A sends some message or packets to receiver B, then routing table will contain the information about the path or, or way that uh, 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 the a packet that uh, that take from uh, uh, sender A to receiver B or, or can be said a route that is taken by a packet to, to reach the destination. So routing table uh, contains the information about uh, about the route that uh, that like that like that is taken by the uh, packet. And best on the destination of IP address and available network interfaces. So let's see how actually a, a routing table or route command use and looks like. Yeah, and like here you can see that how the routing tables looks like and uh, and uh, about the how we root the uh, like how we use the root command. With the help of root command, we can also define a uh, like we can also define a route for traveling the packets. We can like we can define it. We can define it manually also. So in the first uh, command or first screenshot, you can see that we are simply seeing the routing table and in this we have the various columns including the destination, the gateway, gen marks, flag, matrix, reference, use and I, I, I base. I base is uh, nothing but a network interface. So like with the, like the, like one of the important things I 
I personally think about the route table is that it provides a entry or exit point of networks, right? So with the if if suppose if our systems get in trouble and if attacker attacks our node um, over the internet networks or over the networks and and we wants to see the entry and exit point of uh, of attacker so with the help of routing table we can easily see the entry and exit point and 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 like and with the help of pseudo privilege we can delete the entry and exit point of uh, of attacker so this like performing this activity will prevent our node from being attacked by any attacker so in this in like in the below command you can see that i have added the uh, ip address and the path that is that needs to be taken for to reach the destinations and uh, in the like in the above command i have run the sudo with the sudo privilege root command add and then if we take a look at the route route the root table you can see that we have added here a new routing and like similarly and vice versa of add we can also delete the table all we need to just mention the like sudo or root delete then the information about the uh root or or like the way we want to delete and in, like in this snapshot you can see that we don't have any entry of uh, 192.168.1 so yeah this is how routing table work so the main aim of showing this uh, routing routing route or routing command line utility is you is you to provide how we can how we can see the uh, root path or uh, that is taken by our, our package to reach the destination this is the one thing but with the help of routing table we can perform or like resolve lot, lots of problem suppose if our sender sends the message but but receiver is not able to receive it so we can use the routing table to identify what path it actually takes to use the destinations and is there any problem in, in like in 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 that particular way or in um, or the way or, or or the path they have taken so with the help of root command we can easily see that and also it pro provide like prevent us from any attacker because with the help of this root command we can see the entry and exit root of uh, the attacker Let's move forward and see uh, troubleshoot shooting the network issues we usually encounter while performing a network in, in Linux. Let's take a look. Oops, 404, that's an error. We are troubling to finding that state. Most of us encounter with this in information that we are not able to find the information. This may occur because of server not found, server is down, or server is not able to respond to your request, or like many other many other problems. So yeah, ping. Ping is a so much cool command I have ever seen. So ping is a command that is used to identify that there is a communication is up between between the between two hosts or like between sender or receiver or not. Suppose the Google Google example. Let's take an example google.com. If if like 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 let's understand the ping example with with them with very like with very low level. Suppose my internet connection is bad and I'm trying to reach the google.com via web browser. But the thing I encountered is Google is not able to provide you service. Like the server is unavailable, as you can see that in this uh, uh, previous uh, snapshot. So now let's open a command line too and just type ping google.com. This command will send me a request or like uh, like ping ping the google.com and check whether the Google server is responding to its request or not. If the request is not responding, it will send that say, server out of. Uh, like temporary failure in name resolution like uh, google.com is not able to convert this into an ip address because uh, because of unable to like we don't have a network access as we have studied the information about the dns so this problem occurs because of dns like our our google.com is not able to get the ip address of it, it like where it is running so this problem occurs because of dns problem but when we connect our system with the internet and then again run the ping google.com command we will we can see that we are receiving some packets from google that is 64 byte 64 byte 64 byte 
it means that our system is able to communicate with google and getting the response from the google server or like we are having like we are receiving the package from the google now we can if, if we again rerun uh, or like revisit the website which we want to visit over the google we will be able to visit it so ping command is it can be used to identify the problem that is like uh, if if like communication is up between the between the uh, receiver or sender or a host or a or or a like a, or like host or a user as as in this case we are the user and Google is host so we check like we simply run the ping on Google like ping Google dot com command to check whether we are getting the response from the Google or not the another command that is dig dig stands for domain information so uh, dig command is like used to get an information about the particular uh, particular domain or particular particular like uh, particular domain or or a particular server it's perform a dns lockup and display the answer that is generated from the Purely uh, server name, right? And uh, like it is a part of a DNS utils packet that is installed installed with a client name server, and it is usually uh, installed by default. And uh, this information returns information about the server, as you can see that we we bind it the we, like we bind the Google dot com with the eight dot eight dot eight IP address, and here we can see that we have found the one server. It is a global option CMD and. Uh, and the server name is this it is n here is the ip address that like over with google.com is available and yeah we can use the dig command to get information about about the domain or server we want to get so this is also a uh, command we can use to find the general information about the systems or sorry the domain name that is google.com in our case Yeah. Okay. So as moving forward in the, our in our sessions, we have some more command that is place root command. So as a name to this, place root a command in Linux is actually prints the prints the root that the packet is taken to reach the host, right? As as we see in the routing table, we have uh, information about the path that is taken by uh, system to reach the destination but in this we specify the destination as you can see that in our example we have like i have mentioned that trace root google.com and uh, and the, and and like the commands command in like cmd command in two prints the root that package takes to reach the host this is like a command which is useful when like when we want to know the root about like when we want to information about the root and about the hopes uh, that the package takes and in the image we can see that we, like we detect how the root command is used to reach the uh, google.com which is uh, like which is present over the ip address of 142.251.42.46 as you can see that in the like in the second line and uh, like uh, from the local machines and it also brings a detail about uh, all the details about the hopes that visited in between in between to reach these destinations and uh, as you can see that in the first in the first column corresponding to hope hope count the the second column represent the address of that hopes and uh, after that you can see that three space separated times in the milliseconds and uh, and the trace routes command sends three packets to the hope and each of times refer to the time taken by the packets to reach the hopes so yeah this is all about the trace route we can use this command to to like to to check the what uh, routes routes it takes to take takes to reach the destinations or google.com yeah let's move forward with tcp dumb command and we have the end of this session so as you can see that in earlier in, in the DHCP, uh, pro, like while we are talking about the DHCP, uh, we get to encounter about the TCP dumps command, which is used to capture the packet that is moving around the, uh, our, like, like which is moving around the uh, network over some addresses along with the port number. So this uh, TCP dump command is used to capture the packet that is running over particular 
address, particular code, particular uh, particular uh, interfaces. Like in this step, like in the snapshot, you can like you can see that we are we are capturing the packets that is all the packet that is available over the ENP 0s3 network interfaces. And you can see that we have like this command render information about um, all the packets that is moving over this interfaces. This pack, this like this commands is usually used when we want to check whether the sender sender sends the message or not, or like whether whether like whether like uh, the receiver received the packets on the different or like uh, or listening to a wrong port. Like with the help of this TCP dump command, we can check uh, like uh, over which port uh, sender sends the the message and over which ports receiver received the message. If senders are sending the message to a wrong port or not. With the help of this command, we can check it. We can check it. We can easily check it with the help of this command. So, yeah, at the end of this is all about my presentations. We are encounter with lots of information in the sessions and and get a brief intro about how we perform the networking in the Linux and we also get to know about the, the critical service that is provided by uh, provided in Linux like DHCP, DNS server, and we have also taken a look at. Uh, at subnetting, we we have taken a look at DNS. We have taken a look at IP addressing. We also have taken a look at network interfaces, and we are also encounter with some upgrade commands like the root, trace root, ifconfig, tcp dump, and etc. etc. I hope you guys like my sessions, and we are like I hope you guys likes my sessions, and we and we discuss a great, a really great stuff around the networking. If you guys have any any like queries or any any feedback, like any valuable feedback for me, just reach out to me in this case. The QR code is available on your screen. You can just need to scan it with your phone and just get like drop a message over LinkedIn or send a request. We will get uh, together if, if 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 the time suits for me. Yeah, this that's all about me. I hope you like my sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you.